How are you, dear? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, that's good. Okay, so may I know, did you have a chance to, to look at the homework? Yeah, I have a chance. Uh, I already done it. Okay, that's excellent. Okay. Uh, okay. I allow you to share the screen, please, so you can... You are able to share your screen. Okay, wait. Uh, it's sorry, it takes some time to be able to see your screen um, the first time you start sharing. But uh, do you mind telling me uh, if there was a difficulty in what you did so far? Uh, no, there's no difficulty. I actually can. Okay, so you are able to recall that. Is it from your previous knowledge or from our class? Uh, from our previous class and a little bit from my previous knowledge. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, so you do you did the sum, and you call already the divide. Okay, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. That's good. Okay, yeah, that's excellent. Okay, this is a good start. Okay, good. So let me share then my screen to continue, please. Okay. Okay, so now you know if we have a function uh, that returns something, and then you already use a variable to catch that return value. Am I right? You did yeah. that, right? And you even print uh, same like here, the return value. Yeah. Okay. So may I ask you, if you uh, print out the return value, so if you do like that only without catching or or without saving the return value inside the variable um would you be able so you will print same like this so you will print the result of sum into the screen but you will not save it anywhere uh, will you lose that return value forever mm. or, or how uh no because i think it uh restore was it called uh, te temporarily inside the RAM, if I'm not mistaken? Okay, so you have actually two options, one or two, or even both. So, but I would say that it's two options. These two options say that you can either print the result this way, it means that you don't save it to a variable and you just put it in the printing statement directly like that. And when you do that, um, you actually don't keep the return result uh, anywhere. You are not storing it. So you are mm -hmm. getting it here exactly, yes. So it, so whatever return by three and five, which is eight in this case, will be will be put here and be will be printed in the screen. So you will see it, but once you, you leave the end of here, once you reach this uh, semicolon, it's gone. It means that it is not there in the RAM anymore. Okay? So the only way for you to store the result from any function call is to actually store it this way. So this, it, it will be always in the RAM. So if you see in the RAM here, so S will be always in the RAM as a variable, and it will have eight inside. So unless you really go and say uh, S equals zero, 
then you will always have eight inside the RAM until you reach the end of your program. Once you reach the end of your program, everything will be deleted. Everything that is related to this program, every variable that is related to this program will be deleted in, from the RAM. Actually, not deleted, but we don't, we don't really delete, um, uh, we don't empty areas in the RAM. We just remove the reference to it. So if you, once you reach here, if you try to reference S, actually he will tell you that there is no simple that's called S. So he will remove the references that, uh, or uh, um, let me say, imagine that you are, as a person, are keeping your expenses in a piece of paper. Okay, so you write in this piece of paper, okay, I spend on Sunday, maybe 20 ringgit. On Monday, I spend maybe 1,000. Okay, if I ask you, um, burn this paper. So the spending is already done. You already spend, but this paper is only a reference to the spending. It's only a summary that refers to the spending. Uh, so will the spending be deleted itself? No. You are only burning the papers that have the reference to what you really spent. But the spending will not be deleted. It is there. It's already done. It's already in the past. So what I want to say is that if we are talking about the RAM, the RAM will actually still have eight inside it. So typically, I don't, I don't explain that level of details for... Uh, for people who are pre-university, but in your in your level, you need to know that it's uh, dangerous if you don't do that. If I don't explain it, so S will be still in the RAM, and actually not S, but I would say eight itself in the place of S will be still in the RAM. But the reference to S, the table that we tell us that we have a variable that is called S, will be deleted. The table itself will be deleted. So. The place will have eight, but we cannot reach that eight anymore. Once we reach here, we cannot reach that eight. Am I clear or is it difficult, complicated? Mm. I need to re uh, explain it again. Yeah, try explaining a little bit again. Try, okay. I got a little confused. Okay, so first, may, first of all, may I know what did you catch so far and what, what makes you confused? Okay, so what I noticed that you said that uh with the sum of eight, uh where we don't return the value, it does it ends with the code. Am I right? Am I correct? Yes. So I mean you um, we are talking about one, the option one. Yeah, option one. So the option two is that that's if we return the value, it means that it's save uh it's save the value in the RAM, right? Yes, so it save it in an integer, in a in a place in the RAM that is marked as S because we named our variable as S. Okay, and then we are able to print it or we do any arithmetic operation as long as we didn't reach that line. So this is the end. If we didn't reach the end line, so we will still keep the S. We can we can say integer z equal maybe S plus one. We can we can always reference S, but before we reach the end. So as long as we didn't reach the end, which is the, the last curly braces for, for this. So this, once you reach it, everything inside from, from, from this marking, so this is marking as a start. This mark our program starting. So from, from this line until here, we are is, is still able to keep everything in the RAM. Once we reach the end, so the table that reference every variable that we created, we created here S, we created here Z. So this is Z. So maybe Z have S plus one, it means that it have nine. Am I right in this case? Yeah. So, okay, once we reach the end of our program, we need to actually delete the reference or delete the table that tell us that we have variable Z, we have variable S. Why? Because you are you are running a lot of programs in the memory, and we need to return the memory to something called heap. Did you ever hear or study what's the meaning heap? Heap 
peep, 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 peep. Mm, no. Okay, that's... Mm, okay, thanks for telling me that. So, okay. Did you hear about garbage collection when you studied about Java? No, I haven't. I think I, I haven't heard what during my lecture. The word garbage collector, my lecture never said to me oh, in the class. Okay, okay. So now I let you, I give you the summary and then I prepare slides for that. Because again, you are in an advanced level that this kind of uh, question you might even face in the interview or even during any discussion later when you are uh, during your, your work with your colleagues. So, okay, um, forget forget about talking about the heap at the moment. Let me, let me just explain to you first that uh, we have a limited amount of RAM. Do you know what's the meaning RAM, right? Yeah, I know. Okay, so any computer have limited RAM. We, we never have a computer that have unlimited RAM, right? So maybe, uh, what, what is your laptop size? Uh, for the RAM at the moment? Uh, 8 gigabyte. Okay, so 8 is quite small. And I would say that will actually get filled in very fast. So if you open a few programs, and these programs does not release once you close the programs. If they don't release the RAM, the free RAM that, that was occupied by them to the heap, or to the operating system, to the Windows, for example, that you are running, if they don't release the memory that you have, they have used, after maybe one or two hours of opening and closing applications, your RAM will get full, and then you are not able to open anything anymore. So every program that runs in the memory and reach an end and you close it, it have to release what, it, what memory it used to the operating system. The one, did you study about operating system in your studies? Mm, operating system. Okay, so, oh. uh, so you didn't study about Windows, how the Windows operate, and what is the function of an operating system? Mm, no, uh, I don't study. Okay, so, okay. Um, you as a person who is using uh, Windows and, and the laptop and the computer, do you assign uh, amounts of memory to any programs that you operate? So do you did you deal with Microsoft Word before? Yeah, I did Microsoft Word before. Okay, so Microsoft Word is inst installed on your computer, am I right? Yeah. Okay, and Zoom is, is, is a program that is installed on your, pro on your computer, am I right? Yeah, correct. So, and you do you have a media player? Did you ever open a media player on your computer? Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, that's that's excellent. So, so you are able to listen to music, you are able to open the browser, and you are able even to open Microsoft Word and key in some data to the Microsoft Word. Am I right? Yeah, correct. So, do you do you choose or do you tell to the operating system or to the Windows give uh, Microsoft Word, maybe one gig of RAM, or give the media player two gig of RAM. Do you, do you choose that, or it's done automatically for you? It's done automatically. Excellent. I just open the program. <laughs> yes, okay, and then they do everything behind the scene for you, all right? Yeah. Okay, right. did you ever feel that uh, the computer, the operating system complained to you, I don't have enough RAM to open, or he will try his best to arrange the RAM for you. And he never complained. He never tell you, I don't have enough RAM. I cannot open the, the program for you. Did he? Did uh, he? Uh -huh. It doesn't complain. It doesn't complain. Excellent. Yeah. So it will try on its own to handle uh, the small RAM and even the big RAM. So it will arrange everything itself. Uh, but it also have some practices and procedures inside how it does that. So in when we teach uh, operating system when we te when we teach operating system actually we explain that the one who handle and arrange and uh, arrange the ram is actually um uh, how to say um uh, so sorry the one who arranges the ram is the operating system so it means that um the one who also take care of freeing 
the RAM after a program finish executing. Like if you if you listen to music and then you you open the media player for that, it will allocate the RAM for that. If you if you decided not to listen to the music anymore, so the operating system will close uh, the media player and try to uh, free back or take back the RAM that was assigned or um, res uh, reserved for the media player. Did I make myself clear, clear or still confusing? Yeah, you made yourself clear. Okay, so the same happened. So actually the Java programs that you are running, this is the start and this is the end. So it is treated as a program actually, okay? Although it doesn't have a GUI, do you know what's the meaning GUI? Or even a UI, user interface. Did you hear about these two words before? Yeah, I heard. Okay, so this user interface, it means that we don't have buttons, we don't have windows that open. Until, I mean, from these lines, you don't have any window, but it is still occupy a places in the RAM. So once you run from the start and then you reach the end, so the operating system reserve an area in the memory for you. For, so it reserves a few places, okay? Uh, and uh, it doesn't reserve only a limited space, it reserves good amount of space so that you don't run out of uh, memory. And once you reach the end, it will know that your program finished. So uh, once you reach here, and once you press the button run that you do every time, and once, this button in become enabled as run again, it means that you already reached the end here. You already reached that bracket. So once you reach it, it means that we don't need to keep um, reserving the memory for that program void main anymore. We need to release the memory that was reserved. So what was inside the memory? It was inside the print statement, the S variable, and this another print statement and the new one that we added here, which is integer z equal s plus one. So again, it means that once we reach the end, the operating system need to claim back the memory that it reserved for the program. And we have s and z as a variables inside our program and they have values inside. But cleaning the memory, it is an expensive process for the computer. So he will not go and remove the eight or remove the nine. What he will do is he will tell, he will mark that this is a free place, free. So the operating system from inside, it have a table that tell um, where is the free spaces and where is the occupied spaces. So, so if we have uh, eight gig, so you will find that every address in the memory, it have, it is listed in the table. And beside it, it's written, it's free. Of course, they don't write free. I, I mean, that is for us, but to understand, but, or occupied. But they have their own way uh, in writing in binary because they only understand in binary. So this address that is zero, address one, address two, address three, because it's deal with address in binary so far. So it will have a table. This is the operating system. It have a table. It tell this address is free. This address is occupied. So if I need a place to put a new variable, for example, y. So it will look if what is where is the free space? For example, here is free. So it will oh, it will take the address two and put y inside it here. So I will take this space and put the y variable inside it but again yes i i took this space and this space zero two and maybe three i put here uh, s i put here uh, y i put here z variable so i took three places here let me let me try to I took this space, I took this space for the program that is called main here. So for the program main, 
I reserve the uh, three places in the memory for the three variables, S, Y, and Z. And maybe we say uh, Y equal Z plus one, like that. Okay, so what I want to say is that once you reach the end, the computer will not reserve for you these three places anymore. It will try to claim the spaces and mark them as free. Okay, but it will not go and clean the content of the memory area because this is expensive. So it will just write free, like that, free, free. And then what it will do is that it will remove the reference of these variables. So these variables become unknown. It becomes just a normal place that is free. So once you come again and run the same program, so it will reserve, it will reserve a new, so if you press the, the run button it, again, it will reserve new place for S, a new place for Z, a new place for Y. Is it still confusing or? Yeah, I think I got it. Okay, but, but you have to understand that, uh, so, so what I'm telling you now, it is studied in, in maybe, I mean, it can take up to six months. So I just got you the, the little amount of information that can make you understand, but operating system and, and talking about garbage collection is a total separate uh, class that need to be explained and have a lot of details inside. So I just, and also the heap, Okay, and the garbage collection also, again, it's totally different topics. I just get you a little bit from each to make you only understand. So if you don't understand, if you understand 60% of what I said, then we are successful. Okay, because I can, I can add to this knowledge a little bit, a little bit uh, what in, in our next classes. Because somehow, um, can you tell me what is, um, do you study for four years or five years? in your uh, college? Mm, three years and a half. Three years and a half. And what is the name of, of that college? So I can check uh, the sy syllabus for that. Oh, uh, UITM. UITM, okay. And what is the exact uh, um, um, department that you studied in? Or field, field of study? Uh, what is it called? Degree in software. Degree in what? Um, in IT or uh, uh, computer? A bachelor of Info Information System Engineering. Aha, uh -huh, okay. Okay. I, I, I will check that uh, and the syllabus, but but I know very well that even uh, my students who are pre-university, they are studying uh, uh, about operating system, heap, and garbage collection. But anyhow, I will not dedicate classes to that. I will just explain um, little bit by little bit. So as I told you, if you understand 60%, did you understand 60% of what I said so far? Yeah, 60%. around 60%, yeah. Okay, so that is more than enough. Okay, uh, until I see how I can add to your knowledge on that. Okay. Okay. So uh, may I know, uh, just to be frank, uh, what was the difficult uh, thing that I said? And uh, what, what did I make it easy uh, in? Or what did I explain clearly? And, and what was difficult so that I also can can plan um, that in the next classes or, or take care of that in the next classes? I think you explained well on the uh, RAM and everything. Mm -hmm. The difficulty is trying to just grasp. Maybe when I watch back the video, I can understand more. Try to fill in the details. Okay, okay. Mm -mm. Okay, that's good. Uh, yeah, so um, let me go here.
this is we already said about that uh, let me see here Uh, can you see that line? Uh, yeah, I can see it. Okay, D you have write it before, right? You did write that command before, this absolute. Yeah, I think, yeah, I wrote the command before. Okay, so he is telling that this will result an, in an error. Um, but it is not really an error. But are you able to, to tell me why this is not accepted, but this is accepted? So he tells that this will produce an error. Not a compiler error, but it's an error. So what is the difference between line one and line two? Difference is that it call on, uh, what's it called? An integer and the, and the, and the result, uh, what's it called? Um, Uh, it gives a place a name placement for the math absolute. Okay. UBS. Um. Okay. If you write, can you please write that line exactly the same like that, and write these two lines in your code, and tell me if you if you ever see an error that's coming out from this line. It says that it doesn't have any error. Excellent. So it means that this line one doesn't have any error. Did you write these two lines? No, wait, no. Wait. Yeah, I uh, give out the number four. Okay, so so actually the error here, it is not a compiler error that will appear as an error in your uh, compiler when you press run. It is an error that you do not save the output of this mass.absolute. So this mass.absolute will return something to you, but you never store it. So it is it's like gone with the wind. So you didn't store it in the RAM, so you didn't put it in a variable. So once you so once you execute that line and they go to the next line, the output from here, because it's not stored, it's I mean, you cannot you cannot return back to it. You cannot get it back. So do you understand here that you already run this operation, but you are not able to print it. Once you come here, you are, you are cannot say go back to this line and get me out what was uh, uh what was the result so because it's again you didn't you did not store the output of this in a variable but here you did so you was able to say after this get me this result variable and print it out you are not able to do that here you already run it yes 
it have a result, but this result is gone because it is not stored. Did I make myself clear? Yeah. Okay. But really, did you understand what I said? Yeah, uh, I understand what you said. Okay. Okay, so let me uh, skip that part because we're talking about classes. Um, okay. Uh, void does not return. Okay. Yeah. Now have a look at here, please. We have two functions. One is called print x. One is called twice x. Okay. So this print x, uh, what it does? Can you look at here and tell me what what we do on one and two? In one, it print out the input x is the number uh, number five and then in two a return two times x which is twice x so that means two times three is six Am oh. I correct yep yep you are correct so so if we run here if we write this line is that correct to write that line like that? Or it will return error? And why? Um, if you don't think of an obvious reason why this line will get an error, just write it on your code, on your compiler. So you have to write this for for this line to be able to run. You have to go down and define a, a function that's called printx. How is it on your side? Wait. 
is an arrow. Okay. Uh, yeah. Can you please share with me your screen and then? Mm -hmm. What is the error? Mm, on line 19, it says that uh, void type not allowed. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, if you remove on line number 19, if you remove from the plus until you reach that bracket, so it means that you remove all this part. If you delete that part and you try to run again, will that give you the same error? Remove this, all this. Yes, without the semicolon. So you, you keep the semicolon. Yeah, I don't have any error. Okay, so, uh, but why did you, yeah, okay, that's good. So may I know uh, w why when we removed that, uh, that print X, uh, it actually removed the error? And why when we are running on the bottom, we write also print X, but it managed to execute without an issue? Mm -hmm. Because we uh, uh, we delegate print x equals to five right here. Right? Okay, so it me so from what I've seen now that when we said print x, it it does print x right yeah. down here. Okay. Um. So, but only when we put plus. And then we say print X, it doesn't it doesn't accept that from us, right? So the point here that um, if we are returning void from a function, we are not able to put it um, in a print statement. You are not able to put this print X inside here. You are not able to put it in an expression like that, three plus print X. Because again, print x here, sorry, sorry, sorry. This print x, you put three like that, for example. So this expression want to get something to add it with a three. So it expects that print x return something to us, especially it should print return back an integer so that with that in integer I'm able to add it to 3 but but actually we already said that uh, this print x is void it means that it return none it return nothing so I so the computer does not accept the plus sign with a method or a function that return none return void so okay. You are able, can you copy that code? Can you copy that? Which and code? this, this, yeah, these few lines, copy them and make another venger, a version from print X. So under from line 33, paste it. Good. Okay. So now I want you to change it to print X1. Yes. Add one here. Yes, add one. So this is the second copy from the, and I want to, you to remove the void and return integer. Yes, int. Excellent. Okay. I want you to uh, come here and write return x. Okay, now add that 
print x1 to this line plus print x1 Yes, so you would need to pass it something. You need to pass it an input. Okay. So you can add three, for example. Put three inside, yes. And then you try to run. Yeah, um, give five. Yeah, but uh, yes, I understand, but... Um, Input is five. No, no, no. Actually, it this it is actually this. So I want you to here to put here a uh, input of x one. Put here x one, so that we differentiate it from yes. Put x one. Yes. Okay. Now run. Ha! Huh. Do you see now? Okay. Okay. Now, I also want to do something else because now you didn't print A. I want you to, to actually use that print statement to print A so that we know what happened to A actually. You, so you can come here and write uh, system.r.println A. Not here, here. Just, just copy that okay. line system.r.println, I want to print variable A. Yes. Okay. Okay, so first we printed this. After this, we return X. And this x that we returned, which is 3, so he adds 3 plus 3. And then he stores that in A. And then you come here, you tell him print A, so he prints 6. Okay, I will stop here. I want you to, to explain to me what did you catch out from what I did and what is confusing you. Okay, so from the uh, integer a, I noticed that when we print line a is 6, correct? Yes, correct. Gives out number 6. And then for when x1, uh, for integer x, the x1, okay, wait. Why is it equals to three? Because uh, why is it equal to three? Because you passed. Okay, I tell you why is it equal to three. So inside here, you passed three here. So when you when you put x equals three, so it will print three here, which is done here, and then you return the same x. You didn't change it. If you want it to change, you can you can come here and say x plus one, return x plus one. You can here put x plus one, and you will see that it, it doesn't return three anymore, it returns four to you. Okay, that's so, okay. Right. This is this is exactly same like this, except this this function return integer this return nothing so if 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 the function does not return anything i cannot put it in an expression like that this kind of expression expect that the print x will return an integer so that it is he is able to perform the arithmetic operation either with five or six or with any number it doesn't matter but if you print, you put this version, which is print x1, print x without one, this version, so he will not accept it because it's returning void. So you, do you see any return statement here? 
This is a return statement. Do you see any return statement here? No. No. So, so it means that I will execute that function, but I will give nothing back to them. And then they will start to say three plus nothing. Do you think that we are able to perform an arithmetic operation three plus nothing? In, no. pro in programming, no. This is not ex uh, expected and it's not appreciated. This will make an error for them. Computer is dumb. You have to understand that the computer is dumb. You need to follow his rules and procedures. And his rules say that you, you need to give me an integer to perform the arithmetic operation. If you don't, then I stop. I give you an error. Clear? Yeah, it's clear. OK. So now, uh, did you understand what why this give an error in the first place? Yeah, because um, we uh, we didn't we didn't. Uh, what was it called? We did return anything from. Yeah. Yes, excellent. That's we correct. We return anything. Okay. Uh, may I ask you something, please? Um, yeah. I will stop the recording and I would like you to um, go and drink some water and come back to me. Is it okay? Yeah, sure. Okay. Okay, so can you stop the sharing and let me share, please? Okay. Can you see my screen? No, not yet, I believe, yeah. Um, okay, can you see this twice? Yeah, I can see. Okay, uh, may I know if this twice will work? So you see it before, right? So this is returning an integer. So it means that it will double the amount of x and return it back. And then it will multiply that by 5. So this twice, when you pass it 3, it will double it, it will, it will make it 6, and it will return it back. So here will be 6, and 6 will be multiplied by 5. So it will give at the end 30. So 30 will be stored at B variable. Um, is that clear to you? Yeah, it's clear. OK. Do you know why twice works and print x doesn't work? Yeah, because uh, in print x it doesn't return any value, while twice x return the value of integer. Okay, that's excellent. Okay, we are able to um, create different methods with the same name, and the computer will accept that from us. So we call that overloaded methods. So this overloading happens actually uh, by doing so the way that we will show it now. So once we change the method signature, we are able to use the same method name like this, just only by altering the number of parameters that is input or the data type of the parameters. So look here, we are talking two integers, x and y. If we change that to double x and double y, we can use the same variable name, or the same method name, which is add here. We use the same. And so just, but this is what is called method signature. So this is what is called method signature. You need to change something in the method signature 
so that you are able to use the same name for the method and the computer does not give you an error. So, and also it will play smart here. So I will show you how. So here, we, with this method signature, we still use integer like this, but we added another parameter. So instead of taking two parameters, two input, we are taking here three inputs. Okay. So this uh, three inputs make the method signature so this is the signature. So we call this method signature. OK. So this method signature here is different from here, from here. So that allow us to actually able to call this add in this way. So we pass it two integers, and then we add plus, and then we call it again with double. And then we call it again with three parameters. And all this will give no errors. So I would ask you first, before I ask you if you understand or not, I would like you to, to write this three method and try to do this printing. OK, Ken? All right, sure. Is it difficult? No, no. All right, I no, did that. Okay, does it work? Yeah. You... It works. Okay, so it gets you out 16 out of that? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so now let me ask you then. Do you understand what this three method is doing? Uh, yeah, it's actually calculating one by one and return it to the my, the the void main. Yeah. Okay. The so, value. So, do you know um, which one will be executed first from from the left or from the right? Um, the left first. Yes, correct. Yes, correct. So this one first, this is second, and this is third. Okay. If yeah. I ask you, uh, are you able to, um, if you change this to 3.0, do you think that will work? 
Mm, no, because uh the number three method is uh has the value of a uh, integer int not double. Mm -hmm. So it won't That's work. Interesting. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, good. So now we know what is an overloaded uh method. Okay, that's good. Okay, we are going to discuss an important topic here, which is call, uh, call by value. Okay, have a look at here, please. What do you understand from what these three lines is doing? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. If, are you confused? Yeah, a little bit confused. Okay, no problem. So it, that does this line confuse you? No, it does not confuse me. What about this? No, that it does not confuse the confusion is here or in yeah. the output? The third line. The third line. So he is printing here this X, right? Yeah. So why you feel that it's confusing you? Because it says two point x, so it does mean that. It... Oh, uh, no, he he is talking about um okay, he is talking about uh, the second x. So anything in between double quotation is printed as is. So so do you see this? Yeah. So if you print if you print if you remove the dot and you put dash, it will print here dash. Okay. So so this is just a string just a text it will be printed out exactly the same okay so this one this one point x is printed out because we put it here he want to differentiate between this printing and this printing so that's why he said one point x and two point x so it have no meaning that it's going to multiply two by by the x or no he just wanted to, to tell you that uh, so you can remove this one point and you said inside strange. Okay. Okay. So, I mean, he's just marking them so that you know one X is belong to, is printed from where? From here or from here? Because the value will be different. So let me, let me have a look with you. The key point from this or the, the really confusing thing here is that 2x is actually printing 23. Okay, I will let you uh, write that code, but I want you, I want to explain first. So this one okay. x is printed from here, from inside the function. So when, when we call strange, we pass x as 23. And then we add here 23 plus one. And then it results in 24, and we store that 24 in what? In X. And then we print X. So it gives us what? It gives us 24. So it is the same X that is here. But why when I printed X again, it doesn't give me 24? So, so I changed X inside strange X. Inside here, I changed X, I added one to it. It become 24, and I already print that. Here is it, okay? And then I return back to the void main, and then I try to print x, which is marked by 2x here. But it brings 23, not 24. Why? This is the, re the real confusion here. Why x does not change? Do you have because... any idea? Mm -hmm. 
because x is still 23 from the original value. Okay. Uh, Even though x here is the same like x here. Yeah, because uh, it didn't return the value. Okay, that's uh, that's mean. yeah 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 okay that that means that uh, some of the concepts you already uh, grabbed that's that's great. So, okay, this is what we say main scope. So inside the main scope, we have x, and it have a value twenty three. Okay, and inside strange scope. We, we copied, initially we copied the X and we put 23 inside. So there is two X's here. One inside the main scope, which is this. And we copied the same value and we pass it to strange. And inside strange, we ended up actually increasing the X. We make it 24. Okay, so and then we printed the X that we changed. We didn't print that X. Here, inside here, we printed that X, which is 24. So that's why 24 comes out here. And once you reach that line, once you reach that line, so the operating system understood that you no longer need, you no longer need that scope, this strange scope is freed out from the memory. So everything inside that, inside here, that was defined here, is actually freed from the memory. It's claimed back by the operating system. So the operating system consider this area as free. Is that there is no X, there is no local X in the strange scope anymore. There is no even strange scope. So the strange scope start from here and end up here. Once you reach here, so he will, the operating system will take back the memory, the allocated memory from here. And then he will return back here. So we didn't not we did not reach that line yet. So it, this means that the main scope is still valid. So our main X is still 23. That's why when you printed it here, it gives you 23. Did I confuse you more? Actually, what you said in the start is correct, but the detailed explanation is in this way. Okay. Did I confuse you or no, I? No, it uh, helps out uh, fill in the details a little bit. Really? Sure. I, I mean, I, at the end, you, I mean, I'm here to help you, not to examine you or to judge you. Just remember that. So if I know where you stand in really, I'm able to take your hand and push you forward. You need to be just, I don't say naked in front of me, but I win. Mean, you you do not shy even to say anything wrong in front of me. I'm not I'm not judging you. I'm not writing reports about you. Nothing. I'm just here to know where you are, and then I need I I see where I want to take you to become. Okay. So be clear. Anything that you don't understand, you have to be clear with me. Clear? Are we clear? Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So may I understand? Did you understand? What I explain now, uh, above seventy percent or below seventy percent? Uh, around maybe sixty-five percent. Okay, okay, that's okay. May I ask you, please? Can you write that code? All right, sure, sure.
All right. Uh, that... Okay. I just want to highlight something to you before we move on. Yeah. That uh, this thing will happen with integer, with double. We see the example here with an integer, right? So, yeah. but it will happen also with double, with boolean, and with strings. And we call these three data types primitive data types. Primitive data types. So there is other data types that this kind of effect will not happen with them. So that's why I want to tell you, if you see that instead of integer, you got double, the same thing will happen. Anything you change inside the method will not be changed in the main. If it is integer, if it is double, if it is Boolean, if it is string. Other data types, we will talk about them later, okay? Okay, so have a look at this code and tell me is that the same like the previous uh, method? Yeah, it's the same method. Same concept, right? Yeah, same concept. Okay. Okay. Are you able to highlight to me what is the errors here? Before you look at the errors, I would advise you to actually look at the definition of these two uh, functions, the print act and the add. Did you have a look? Yeah. Okay. So may I know from you uh, what is the errors that will occur in this code based on the definition of the print X and the add? Will this print X call produce an error? Mm. Um, no, it does not produce okay. an error. Okay. What about the add? I don't think so. It will produce an error. Okay. What about this? If you still see that it will not produce an error, I would advise you write these two lines and the two function definitions and then try to run, please.
Did you manage to write them? Yes, my Yeah, I managed to write them. Okay. Did you run? Yeah, I ran it. What is error? The print X and the app. Produce an error. Yeah. Can you error. can you read the error? The error is the the method print X in class main cannot be applied to given types. It required an integer and found no argument. So an argument means an input. So he require here an input, which 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 he call as an argument. He require require an argument of type integer x integer, and you didn't pass him anything. You pass him nothing. So he cannot accept that. The computer is done. He is expecting print x to get an argument, one argument. If you pass it two, it will produce an error. If you pass nothing. It will produce an error. Okay, what is the error that is happening on add on the add? Uh, it has no arguments. It has no arguments, right? And he is also expecting two arguments. Am I right? Yeah. Can you can you put here five? Only one five. And try to run. No. So what is the error? The error is um, the add. Yeah. Yeah, the error is add because it does not uh, it does not have enough arguments. Okay, if you okay, that's good. Did you add that line or not yet? Yeah, uh, uh, not yet. Okay. Yeah, same thing. Okay. So may I ask you please, can you put here inside print x you put 10 as an argument? Mm -hmm. And then you comment that line, the add that got nothing inside. Okay. Yeah. Okay, can you run now? Yeah, I can run now. The input is that. The input is 10. So this works and this also seems to work, right? It doesn't yeah, produce any error, right? Yeah, correct. So now, did you realize when we make a function call, what did we need to care for so that we don't make an error? It's clear now? Yeah, it's clear. We need to okay. add the argument based on the... The inputs that we, we put, decide yeah, for the function yeah. definition. Okay. So do you understand that this is called function definition? Mm. Yeah, now, yeah, I understand. Okay, and also this is called function definition. So based on the function definition, he will decide how many inputs or how many arguments. Okay, now, can you write that line? And tell me if there is an error and why is the error? Yeah, it does not uh, uh because the read because the uh, static void placement. 
Okay, so it gives an error? Yeah, it gives an error. So it means that I'm not able to put uh, this print X inside here, right? Yeah, yeah. You know why, right? Yeah, because it doesn't return any value. So nothing will be printed out. We cannot print we cannot print nothing. We have to print something, right? Yeah, correct. Okay. What about this line? Do you think it will produce an error? Mm. No, it does not produce an error. Okay, what about this? No, it does not produce an error also. Also, the last one, you sure? Sure. Think again. <laughs> if you are not sure, just write it. Oh yeah, because uh, y uh, has six point zero because it's a double. Why the uh, called the function definition we put on y is an integer, not a double. Excellent, excellent. Okay, so now it's clear. Yeah, it's clear. Okay. So here, they explain everything that we talk about. So. Now I want you from um, so are you able to write a, a method, a definition for a method that actually uh, calculates the average for us and return a double, return the so this is an exercise you need to write this method function definition which is an average it take two input x and y and it return a double you know how the average is calculated right yeah so x plus y divided by two by the count so we need to return that are you able to write that oh well, i try okay good and let me see, please, if you don't mind sharing. Uh, can I see the question again? Yes, I will send it to you. Okay. I will send it to you. Give me a second. Okay. Da. And you can start sharing your screen. No.
Pues, pues, eh. I still didn't see your screen. Eh. Okay. So how how are you going to start? Can you can you make use of any of the old functions that you have created? For example, the add function definition, and then you 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 make a copy of it, and then you start modifying. Go to the function definition that is called add on line forty two. So make another copy from it so that you don't you don't lose that. And then you change that to instead of the word the method name add, make it average. Yes, okay, that's good. Change it to average. But actually, I also want to tell you something that, um, never mind, you continue that first. Okay, okay excellent, yes. So instead of calling add, we have protocol average. You pass it um, 11 and 12, for example. Excellent, yes, that's good. Okay. So the next thing that you need to do is that uh, the average at the moment is adding two numbers, but uh, the real average, it is uh, actually uh, dividing after adding, it is dividing by the numbers count. So if you have, if you want to find an average of three numbers, so it means that x plus y plus z divided by the count, which is three. So if you want to find the average of x and y, you divide them by two, because they are two. So Excellent. Yes, that's good. Can you start to run first? Okay, so there is no output, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, to be able to see an output, then you have to do something with the average. So what can you do? So this, there is an error because he does not at first there is no semicolon no. yeah you can see here yeah. Yeah. and the second error will be because he doesn't know what the meaning average average is not a variable so so you have two options you either can copy the exact same thing here 
So you need to open brackets, pass it 11 and 12, like that. This is one option. Okay. So you just you so you copy the, the whole line here. You copy all and you just put it here. Replace this average. Yeah. Yes, but remove the semicolon because yeah, you can run. So that produce eleven. Okay. Okay. Uh, what about the second one? So the second option. Uh, the second option, I would say, uh, you create a double variable that uh, gets out the return value from the average, and then you print it out. So you can say double a b g equal, and then you copy that line here, put it down. Not copy, just remove it totally and put it down. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's good. Okay. So now you know what to do, right? Excellent. Excellent. Yes. Okay. So the same results we will be having. Okay. So it's the same. So if you change here, uh, instead of 12, you put 13. Will the output change? Yeah, the output will change. So if you change, it means that what we are doing is actually correct. The input change, the, out the output change. Okay? Am I clear so far? Yeah, I can. Okay. So I would say uh, we have uh, another method that we need to do, actually, which is called slope. So... So I am i don't really care about the mathematics of it, so I will just explain to you the mathematics of that. Um, and then, but then you have to do the programming side. So mathematics is just subtracting and dividing um, the four points from each other. And then that will result in... So can you please have a look at... What's the exercise required from you? What does it say? No, I mean, it's in the image that I passed you. Oh. In the uh, WhatsApp. Given two options, x1, y1, and x2, y2 returns the slope of the line through them. You may assume x1 is not equal to x2. Okay, so what I want to say is that to get the slope, the, the mass of it, the mathematics side for, from it, it says that the slope, can you can get it by y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1, and then you return the result. And... Yeah.
Okay, I think, yes, that is correct. And you are, um, yeah, this is excellent. You do it alone and that's something great. So I would say there is another two exercises, but I will leave it to you as a homework. And by this, we close the module for the methods. And then we move to the next slide uh, in the next class. Is everything fine to you so far? Yeah, everything's fine for me so far. Okay, then we close our class today and then I will send you the homework. Okay? Okay, sure. Take care. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for your time. Okay, bye bye.